Hi everyone, in this class we will see about specimen collection, pre-analytical errors and CSF that is cerebrospinal fluid. So under these three topics we will see what is specimen collection and what are the examination comes under pre-analytical errors and the errors include and the physical properties, chemical properties and examination of CSF and the clinical significance of it. So first we will see specimen collection also called as sample collection. So it is defined as the collection of specimen for the purpose of diagnosis and treatment. So it is used for analysis of trace elements and it must be collected with the pure attention while the time of collection and also details of anticoagulant and the apparatus used for this process. So basically blood is the common specimen or common sample used to examine in the laboratory. As blood is body fluid which delivers necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to cells. So here in lab testing process blood has taken as a sample in three forms as whole blood, serum and plasma. So as we know serum is taken for measuring wide variety of analytes include steroids, thyroid and peptide hormones and it's free of clotting factors and the plasma it's a clear straw colored liquid portion of a blood that holds whole blood cells and the next specimen will take it as urine fecus and other body fluids these are also used for the diagnosis like saliva spinal synovial amniotic pleural acetic fluid So here in this tableau column we can see the sample test and collection of method are given in the detailing as under the sample we can see whole blood, plasma, serum, urine, CSF, acetic fluid and pleural fluid. As whole blood the test which are which undergoes are sugar, urea, blood and gases and the collection method will be obtained by the arterial or venipuncture collected with the anticoagulants like heparin. So by using anticoagulants the whole blood will not be clotted so it can easily examine for the such test and the next one is the plasma where we can test like enzymes, electrolytes and other metabolites and the collection method will be blood with anticoagulants and later it's centrifuged and the lower portion is the will get it as plasma and next one is a serum as also we can test enzymes, electrolytes and other metabolites and the collection method will be blood collected in a glass container without any anticoagulant so later will centrifuge after after the clotting process and the supernatant will be the serum and the next specimen will be urine that is the test under urine we can do is reducing sugar protein chloride bile salts and bile pigments and etc so the collection method as midstream urine directly passed into a container or sometimes from the catheter of a patient and the CSF the test comes under CSF will be sugar protein lactate and the collection method as lumbar puncture between the L3 and the L4 and sub arachnoid space and the acidic fluid and the pleural fluid so the test comes uh, under these acidic and pleural fluid will be sugar protein chloride as the collection method includes acidic tap and the floral tap.
so next we'll see the anticoagulants these are the chemical agent which prevents coagulation so it's called anticoagulant the serum or plasma separation requires the use of anticoagulants as it's a chemical agent it can prevent coagulation of a blood so there are required in varying amounts and act by the different mechanism as we can see heparin edta and oxalates are the main anticoagulants used in the lab so first the heparin it's a most preferred coagulant which is a heteropolysaccharide it prevents coagulation by increasing the action of a antithrombin 3 in the blood and the next is edta that is salts of ethylene diamine tetracyclic acid it acts by removing calcium ions by chelation so used in concentration of a 2 mg of the disodium salt per ml of a blood is sufficient for the coagulation so next is a oxalates that is lithium or sodium or potassium oxalates which acts as a anticoagulants by removing calcium ions which is essential for the coagulation process and there are the vacutaneous or sample containers as tube colors which indicates the additives present in it so here we can see lavender red yellow blue black gray and green the colors of a tube of a container so here is a brief description about the tube cap color and what are the additives added here and the use of those additives so first will be yellow which represents the additive as sodium polyaniline ethyl sulfonate and acid citrate dextrol that is acd so use of this sps and acd it prevents the blood from clotting and stabilizes the bacterial growth and the light blue tube color of a container which has sodium citrate as additive it binds and removes calcium to prevent from the clotting and the red one which has a silica particles acts as clot activators and promotes blood clotting with the glass or silica particles which present in it and the green tan or a glass which has a apparent in sodium or lithium or oxalate ammonium it inhibits the thrombin formation to prevent the clotting and the royal blue as it has a sodium heparin and sodium edta which inhibits thrombin formation to prevent clotting and the lavender lavender color it's a edta ethylene diamine tetracyclic acid which removes calcium preventing from the clotting of blood and the gray one sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate so sodium fluoride acts as an anti glycolytic agent and the potassium oxalate which removes calcium and acts as an anticoagulant and the black one will be sodium citrate it forms calcium salts to remove the calcium and stops a further clotting of a blood so here are the some implementation has to be taken care in the lab while collecting the specimen so first has to wash hands to reduce the transmission of microorganisms through hand and one has to check the client's identification and if appropriate to ensure the current correct client 
and explain procedure to client to allow anxiety and encourages cooperation and the prepare supplies like open sterile packages label specimen collection tubes place in easy reach to ensure efficiency so these are the precautions or implementation which has to be taken care while the collecting the sample so as a common specimen we'll see blood as blood is the common specimen it's important to know about the sites of blood which has to be collected for the investigation so first venous arterial and capillary so what is venous blood it's obtained from anticoagulatory vein by vein puncture and it is most common blood sample and analyzed for the most biochemical investigation including acid based disorders and the arterial blood it mainly required for the evaluating blood gases such as oxygen transport and commonly obtained from the radial or femoral artery and the capillary blood it's used to obtain small blood samples for smear examination or dry chemistry analysis so and venous blood differs from arterial in many ways for example it has a more lactic acid partial carbon dioxide and less partial oxygen and ph etc so more than the arterial blood venous blood is preferred and the equipments needed are it has to be antiseptic collection tubes sterile cotton wool swabs after taking a, or drawing a blood from the patient we need all these equipments and the sterile lancet and the non sterile gloves has to be wear and hand towel or absorbent pad and the slides if at all smear has to be done and the reagents the sites for the venous blood will be anticoagulatory veins radial vein and dorsal vein so here the veins used for the drawing blood are median cubital vein that's the first choice and well supported if we fail across the median cubital vein second choice will be cephalic vein and the third basilic vein so after this collection of a sample from a vein what are the process which undergoes while collecting will be apply tourniquet clean the area prick the vein and if blood is coming out over in the vein so we'll come to the site of a vein and draw the amount needed for the order test and the release the tourniquet so apply pressure with the dry swab after withdrawing the needle to prevent bleeding from the punctured site so observe and leave the patient comfortably dispose the equipment safely so these are the procedures while collecting the sample so after collecting the sample we need to transport preserve and store so here we'll see preservation storage and transport of samples so once the sample is collected it must be labeled correctly and transported to the laboratory as soon as possible so the collected sample has to be labeled by the barcode or the details of a patient on a tube and it has to be transported to the lab as soon as possible and the passage of time affects the concentration of many blood constituents here the time of passage or transportation time also affects on the blood constituents and serum must be stored at 4 degrees celsius and it can be frozen for the longer periods of time at some minus 70 degree to minus 80 degree celsius in deep freezer so next to the blood urine is the most common specimen so the collection will be preferably morning urine sample is used for the qualitative analysis but for quantitative estimation 24 hours of a urine sample is required 
and the preservation of a urine is a very important as substances added to the urine it reduces the bacterial action or chemical decomposition or to solubilize the constituents that might precipitate out of the solution these preser preservatives are used they are 10 ml of a concentration of hcl is put in a container for 24 hours of specimen and the thymol this thymol free few crystals are used for this and the formalin 3 to 4 drops for 100 ml of a sample is taken and the toluene and acetic acid also can be used as a preservative and other body fluids as CSO acetic acid CSO it uses like to diagnose meningitis CVA dimyl D myelin Nating diseases like multiple sclerosis, meningeal involvement in the malignant disease. The procedures procedure will be by lumbar puncture and the acetic fluid uses to diagnose ascites of any cause, cirrhosis, peritonitis, etc. And the procedure will be abdominal tap at the most dependent portion at maximum dullness. And the pleural fluid and pericardial fluid to diagnosis pleural O and pericardial effusion and the amniotic fluid to diagnose pre prenatal diagnosis of a congenital disorder, assessment of fetal maturity and RH ISO immunization. And the procedure will be amniocentesis. And the fecus, fecus fat, obstructive jaundice and the malabsorption and the parasites as for the microscopy and hemon occult blood for the GI bleeding and the fecal nitrogen will be used for the investigation of a malabsorption. So here the care has to be taken to prevent the contamination with the urine during the collection and usually fresh specimens to be used to avoid need for preservation. So the next topic will see the pre-analytical errors. So as we do the process in a laboratory as specimen collection, we will come across some errors that is defined as the discrepancy between the results obtained in the testing process in the true value or in the accepted value. So under these errors there are three types that is pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical errors. So we will see the pre-analytical errors here. If there is a lack of standardization and monitoring of pre-analytical variables, it includes procedures for patient identification, sample collection, handling and process that may vary the reliability of the test results. So errors occurs before the process of a sample. Those errors comes under the pre-analytical errors. And sometimes other than the variables of specimen collection or pre-analytical errors, we may come across some factors also. So these pre-analytical phase includes the greatest potential for the quality improvement of a lab and the pre-analytical variables can dramatically affect the result of, of any laboratory test. So here the pre-analytical examination comes under the errors or patient identification and pre preparation, selecting the site, proper venipuncture technique, order of draw and proper tube mixing, correct specimen volume, proper tube handling, centrifugation, special handling of blood samples, stability for whole blood, serum and plasma. So these are the examination comes under the pre-analytical process. And some of the types of pre-analytical errors will be patient identification, turnaround time, laboratory logs, transcription errors, patient preparation, specimen collection and personal error. So under patient identification, the labeling of a specimen may be improper. So we can correct by the barcoding. So by using barcode, there will be a no requirement of a labeling patient details and turnaround time that is the time required for the specimen reaching the laboratory and the result being dispatched. So if it is a TAT is a minimum 
and the error will be less in the laboratory logs entry of a test details in the lab results has to be in a correct proper way and the transcription errors electronic identification and tracking of specimens and the patient preparation improper standardization of a collection time and the manner of collection so for the collection of a sample has to be in a proper way that usually we'll see in collecting a blood uh, for the exam investigation of a glucose as fbs or ppbs or rbs that according to the time before after we need to collect the samples and the manner of collection also important and the specimen collection which has to be taken as the container and the which what is the anticoagulant present in the container and the separation process and aliquot so the personal errors also affects person to the person so here the error may be come across uh, factors such as lipemic specimen which is caused by the test collection after heavy mills and pre existing metabolic disorders also affects the cause for the lipemic specimen and from these the lipemic specimen the values may get wrong or wrong electrolyte values will be getting and the hemolysis the causes of hemolysis will be forcing blood through the needle of syringe and the collecting blood through fourth line and vigorous shaking of a specimen also includes hemolysis centrifuging specimen before clotting so one has to centrifuge the sample after the clotting of blood and the tonicoid should not be applied for the more than 1 hour at is as it can rupture the rbc and the clotted specimen so clotted plasma specimen results from in inappropriate mixing of tubes and also results in false leukopenia and aberrant red cell indices so next we'll see the csf that is cerebrospinal fluid it includes cf is csf is found in the cavity that surrounds the brain and spinal cord between the pia and arachnoid matter in the brain so it's produced by the cells of choroid plexus in the ventricles of the brain and total volume will be 130 ml that is daily secretion is about 750 ml here the chloride is present in higher concentration and it's important in evaluation of infectious non infectious or inflammatory conditions involving the spinal cord brain and the meninges so we'll see the physical and chemical properties of a csf that is pressure appearance ph and specific gravity comes under the physical properties and the protein glucose chloride calcium inorganic phosphate urea immunoglobulins that is igg and iga and cell that is lymphocytes which are comes under the chemical properties so the pressure of a csf will be under to 200 ml of a water and appearance as clear transparent colorless without any turbidity the ph will be 7.31 to 7.40 the specific gravity which includes 1.006 to 1.008 and the chemical properties that is the protein contains 14 to 45 mg per dl in a csf and the glucose will be 45 to 100 mg per dl and the chloride 120 to 130 milli equivalent per liter and the calcium 5.5 to 6 mg per dl in organic phosphate as 1.5 to 2.1 mg per dl the urea will be 20 to 40 mg per dl immunoglobulins as igg 30 mg per liter and iga as 4 mg per liter and the cells will be 0 to 4 per cubic millimeter and the functions which includes the protection beyond c excretion of waste products as the protection csf protect the brain from damage by buffering 
so in other words here's a facts to question a blow to the head and lessen the impact of brain and the biopsy the brain is immersed in a fluid so the net weight of the brain will be less and reduced to from about to 1400 gram to the 50 gram so therefore pressure at the base of the brain will be reduced and the excretion of waste product it's a main important function the csf has from the csf to the blood takes potentially harmful metabolites drugs and other substances away from the brain and the regulation of a cranial content volume it's a, the volume is essential because brain may be affected if volume is increases so the collection of csf it's followed by the two methods by lumbar puncture and systemic function puncture the lumbar puncture in this the needle is introduced into the subarachnoid space in the lumbar region and in the systemal puncture the needle between the occipital bone and the atlas so the that it enters the cisterna magma so these are the two methods for the collection of a csf so here we need to note that csf should be analyzed immediately within an hour of a after collection and if storage is required in this case can be done at 4 to 8 degree celsius as a short term or minus 20 degree celsius as a long term and the biochemical examination comes under the csf will be estimation of a protein which is done by the turbidimetric method using sulfur salicylic acid and the estimation of a globulin by pandas test and estimation of sugar by glucose oxidation method and estimation of a chloride usually done by the electronic instrument and the clinical significance includes of csf is the testing is used to help in the diagnosis of a wide variety of diseases and conditions affecting the brain spinal cord and the infections such as meningitis and encephalitis to determine if infection is caused by the viruses or less commonly by mycomyco bacterium tuberculosis fungi or bacteria and to distinguish them from the other conditions and also to detect bleeding around the brain which is a dangerous and also autoimmune disorders that affect the cns such as guillain barre syndrome or multiple sclerosis and the tumors located in the cns as a primary or secondary and alzheimer's disease as a reversible form of a dementia so from all these three topics the clinical side of a biochemistry we have studied so this includes this ends with the csf pre analytical errors and the specimen collection which is a very important